All right, the steps to OEE. So we've decided we're going to capture OEE. What steps are you going to go through? Take zero. All right, we've convinced you OEE is a number you have to have. We have convinced you that you will not be successful. It's not optional. You have to have the number, okay? So what's the process that you're going to go through to capture it? It's very easy. Remember our automation stack here? Got all of our PLCs out on the edge. There's some things we're gonna need on the edge, some important information, all right? So inside of, for every machine that I have, so I've got a machine. I have machine one and I have machine two, M2. And machine one and machine two make up a production line, okay? So machine one and machine two make up a production line. In order for me to calculate OEE, there's a whole series of things that I've got to have, all right? I need to know what is my schedule. I need to know my standard rates. And they don't just have to be standard. They could be a scheduled rate. I need to know my scheduled rate. I need to know the good parts that I produced. I need to know the bad parts I produced. I need to know what was the state of my machine or the state of my line. And I'm gonna talk about that in a second. So in the ISA 95 world, machine is considered a cell and we wanna see OEE by cell and this is considered a line, okay? So we want state, both cell and line state, good parts, bad parts. We, um, we might wanna know the product code. Here's why, because most of the time um, your rate, this rate here, might be tied to the product code. So when I'm producing product X, I need to produce, I should be producing at a certain rate. So we wanna know our schedule, standard rate, good parts, bad parts, the state changes, our product code. Uh, we may wanna know raw materials. We may wanna know lot numbers. There's a lot of things that we might wanna know to create, the cal to create our calculation. But here are the things you gotta know. Gotta know schedule, what, how much time should I be running? I gotta know what that rate is. Okay, I need that number. I need my good parts. I need my bad parts. I need my state. And that's really it. I need, the, I need those five at a minimum. So when we go in for customer X and we're gonna calculate OEE, the first thing that we do is we have to say, the very first question we say is, hey, can we have all the PLC code for your machines, all right? So for a machine one and machine two, let me see the PLC code. Why, what am I looking for in the PLC, Zach? Look at all the tags that you need. Yeah. Right, I'm looking for, can I determine how many widgets I produced? Can I look at, is there waste in there? And machine state, okay? So every PLC has alarms. So the machine should be able to tell us when it's running or not running, but this isn't uniform, okay? Most companies don't ship their equipment with a state register, okay? So a standard state register would be an integer that equals whatever, zero, let's say it's zero to 10, okay? What we have to do, we're gonna be scanning this register to determine what the state of the machine is. Why? Because we use the state to determine is the machine in a planned downtime event, is it an unplanned downtime event, or is it running, okay? There are some other numbers that we care about, so there, you're gonna have the advanced MES guys who get in here, they're gonna go, hey Walker, you're forgetting about waiting on parts, so I'm starved, or I'm blocked, so waiting to send parts. So I may have a linear process here. This machine may be ready to send a part down the line, but it can't because this machine's down, this one's blocked. And so because it's blocked, we don't want to ding the performance number on this machine. So what we do is we say it's blocked and we start subtracting that from the schedule time. You don't ding this machine for being blocked, you ding that machine for being down, right? So capturing OEE is not easy. It's not an easy process. That's why the people who you hire to build your MES system, they need to know what they're doing. And in my opinion, there aren't a lot of them out there. We come behind, this is the reason that we have, you have 10% success rate in MES deployments, okay? Any idiot can build a SCADA system. I say this all the time. And, that does, and I'm not putting down people who build SCADA systems, it's where I started. But any idiot can build a SCADA system. Why? Because all a SCADA system is, is a distributed HMI system, okay? And any idiot can build an HMI, and they do. <laughs> there are idiots who build HMIs, and then you just build a distributed SCADA system. MES is, doesn't build on top of SCADA. It's a completely different functionality. It's much more complex. It requires a lot of abstraction of data. Uh, it, it requires a lot of massaging and manipulating and bucketing of time series data. It's a, this is a much more advanced feature than enterprise-wide SCADA system. Much more advanced, okay? 
All right, so the first thing we do is we look at the machine and we say we got to get in the PLCs because we got to see if this stuff is available. If this stuff's not available, and most of the time it isn't, we have to create it. So we start with the state, okay? Let's say the machine has 10 alarms inside of it, okay? What we'll do is we will create our own status register in the MES software. We'll say, look at these 10 alarms. If any of these alarms are true, we'll put them in a priority. So the, the highest alarm is at the top, the lowest alarm's at the bottom, whichever the first one you get to, that'll be the state. And then we'll convert that into a binary coded decimal, right? So we'll do a BCD, and anybody who does MES systems knows exactly what I'm talking about because you've done it before. You will turn those 10 alarms into a binary coded decimal, which will give you a value. And then we convert that value, take that integer and we convert it into a matrix. So in our case, our matrix is zero equals stopped. We always reserve this. One is always running, okay? Two could be downtime one. Three could be downtime two. Four could be downtime three. Five could be planned downtime one. Six could be planned downtime two, okay? And all the way up to 10, right, or up to nine. Here's the other thing. You may get some of that information, some of that state information. This nine's gonna be dropped off, I'm sorry. But you can get some of the state information from the machine. You may also get some of it from the operator. So what if the operator, what if the machine never tells us the operator's at break? He went to break. So we may need to marry what the machine can tell us with what the operator tells us. Or we can pre-schedule the break, which I never recommend doing, okay? And here's why. When you pre-schedule the break in your schedule, unscheduling it's pretty hard when you decide to work through lunch or you decide to keep that machine running during the break, okay? So in our opinion, when we're doing these systems, we always say, have the operator tell us when they went to break and when they went to lunch. And they can even do it after they did it if they want to. So that's the first thing we do. We go to the PLC and we get our state. The next thing we do is we are looking for good parts we produced and bad parts we produced. Very few machines, percentage-wise, are gonna tell you the waste they produced, okay? Because waste comes in lots of different ways. The operator may, I had a breakdown event that produced six bad parts and I gotta throw those away. So generally bad parts are a combination of what the operator knows and what the machine can tell you, okay? So we get bad parts and then we get good parts. Oftentimes, there's also another count called infeed, which is really generally good parts plus bad parts, okay? We get standard rate from somewhere. Standard rate could be a theoretical rate that's always the same, one part per minute, okay? So my rate could be one part per minute. No matter what, we're always gonna compare against my theoretical rate. That's generally not the way you do it. Generally, what you do is you'll have a rate for every product code. You'll have a standard rate for every product code. And generally, we gotta pull that from a database, okay? And then we have to have the schedule. The schedule is how long did I run? Now, most of the time, the way we do this is we don't predefine the schedule. Sometimes we do, but most of the time we just have the operator start a production run. So I start a production run and I run that production run for whatever amount of time. This is our production run, okay? And that's our rising edge and falling edge, and those are the total minutes we were scheduled. And then we subtract all of the planned downtime from the total time we ran. Other times, it's a scheduled run. So other times, it is we're supposed to start at 7 o'clock in the morning, we're supposed to finish at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and we'll subtract our production time. It's either or. But when you're integrating for OEE, you have to, that's a decision that has to be made and you need to know how it works. And then what's the last thing that we do? The last thing that we do is we put all of this stuff together. So enterprise, plant, area, line, and cell. We organize it, okay? And, and what we do is we basically put in our state, we put in our good, we put in our bad, we will put in, we'll put, let's put the rate here. We'll put our rate here, okay? From here, we can roll all of this up to various layers. So we put it in here, and then we dump this into an OEE engine. And that engine spits out a visual, which is gonna be something like this. Availability, quality, performance, and OEE. So we have to organize all these things together and spit it out. But guess what? Because we take the time to do it right, we organize the data using the ISA 95 model, we can then roll these calculations when I, if I wanna know what is the OEE of this individual cell, what's the OEE of this individual cell, and what's the OEE of these lines, the two cells together, okay? I can then do the same thing. 
I can run the line totals through the OEE engine to give us the OEE calculation by line. And a line is a group of machines. An area is a group of lines, okay? So I can do the same thing, roll up to area and spit out OEE overall. And then I can do the same thing at the plant and I can do the same thing at the enterprise, right? A plant is a group of areas and an enterprise is a group of plants. We actually don't generally do it this way. We do it in the other direction. The OEE for the enterprise was really low. So let's go look at all the OEE for the plants and find out where our problem plant is. We figure out what the problem plant is and then we look for the problem area within the problem plant. And then we drill down to the problem line within the problem area. And then we drill down to the problem cell within the problem line to get down to our root cause. And then we develop our continuous improvement plan based on what that root cause is. Right now, people, human beings, are doing this process. The holy grail is we roll all of that up into machine learning and AI. We consume a whole bunch of other information, information from the ERP, information from the SCADA system, what alarms are active, et cetera, et cetera. What operators are running? What raw material vendors are we using today? Which uh, company are we shipping our goods through? Who was the customer service representative who opened the initial order? All those things, we roll all that stuff up into here. In, and then we add in a bunch of accounting data, which of these product codes are most profitable, which client has been working with us the longest. And that machine learning and AI algorithm is then going to make determinations about how we should improve our process over time. Just in real time, that is, hey, machine two has been down. You've been running product code A on machine two for the last 24 hours and you can't run it right. Now your schedule's late. Based on the last time we ran product B, which is our other option, you ran at a much higher efficiency. You should stop product A's order right now because the customer is not that important. It's a low profitability item and you should start running product B and move product A to some other line. Right now you rely on people to do all of that analysis manually and what you need to do, instead of asking people to try and do this drill down, what you want to do is give them the tool to spit out the optimal decision so that they can then make the decision whether or not to execute the recommendation from machine learning and AI. That's the goal. That's why we're talking about this OEE part. But when we talk about once we've decided we're gonna calculate OEE, what is that process? These are the steps that you go through. And granted, what I just went through here is a 30,000 foot view of how to go ahead and start capturing OEE on your equipment, your key equipment. Long term, what are you going to do? You're gonna learn that you wanna prepackage these four in every single machine that your machine builders build for you in the future. Right now, you don't do that. You never ask your machine builder, hey, do you guys already have a state register? Do you already track good parts? Are you already tracking bad parts? Are you already, right? And they'll say, well, no, we don't because nobody wants to pay for the sensor on the end of the machine that counts the part. That sensor's an extra $1,100. And your product engineer told us to cut 10% from the total budget. So he took that $1,100 sensor off your machine, which could have saved you millions of dollars and gained efficiency if only you had visibility to the number of good parts and bad parts you had coming off the machine. So hopefully in that high level overview, this gives you a better understanding of the process that you go through when we decide we want to capture OEE. In a couple of future videos, we're going to get into this a little bit deeper. But hopefully this, now what you do is you understand the value, value of OEE and the process you go through to start capturing it, All right? Hey, Zach wants me to tell you again, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, share with your friends, watch a video over here, a video over here. YouTube's really good at recommending all this stuff to you. Do that, watch those videos, give us ideas on what you wanna see and thanks for watching, bing, boom, out.